Hey, what's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. Today, I'm gonna be walking you guys through how we did this custom Jordan 1 Low here in this really cool kind of aquatic underwater theme. So we had a client who wanted a pair based off of their love for travel, and the first thing that came to my mind was to do a really cool theme based off of almost like a beach gradient colorway. And sometimes that's all you really need as far as design inspiration goes. You come up with a really cool color palette, and then you're able to just play around with some different options in Photoshop, pick the one that you like best, and then try to bring that to life. Once I have our colorway planned out, we're ready to move into some of our paint selection, and here's some of the colors that we'll be using today. And here's the ratio that I used to get our main turquoisey blue. Once we have our shoes completely prepped and any panels that we don't want our blue base to get completely taped off, we're gonna move into airbrushing some base layers of our light blue. I always like to mix in a little bit of white into some of my initial base layers. Just really helps the color lay more evenly, so that's what you're seeing here on some of our preliminary coats. To get a nice solid base, this is gonna take me about four coats total. Now I'm essentially gonna be moving into a three color gradient here, even though all of our blues are gonna be very similar and certainly within the same family. So for my lightest blue near the bottom or the midsole, I'm gonna be mixing in a little bit more of white and mint into our blue paint. I'm gonna do two coats about a third of the way up our shoe. Now to create an even smoother blend between these two colors, I'm gonna mix in a little bit more of our original blue directly back into my mixture. Now with this sort of in-between color here, we're gonna be able to apply our middle bar technique and all this does is cover up any areas where the two colors meet, therefore just creating an even more seamless blend. Now moving into our darker blue near the top, I'm gonna to be mixing in a little bit more neon Bahama blue along with some regular blue into our base blue. Once I've done two coats of that, I'm then gonna do our middle bar technique again where our darker blue meets our medium blue color. And here's a look at how our three color gradient is looking right now. Now there's one final thing that I like to do anytime I have a gradient like this to just up the contrast a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is just near the very ends of the gradient, so all the way up to the top with the darkest blue, I'm gonna darken it even a little bit further and just spray this near the very tip. So we're talking about only 10% probably total of our upper that we're working on. And all this does is just create a little bit more contrast because I'm darkening that color near the very top just a little bit more. I'm then gonna apply this same principle near the midsole by lightening my color with white even a little bit more. And again, I'm only spraying this probably about 10% total of the distance, just lightening it up even a little bit more at the bottom, darkening up at the top. It's just gonna create a little bit more contrast and therefore you're gonna have an even stronger gradient and this is how it looks once we're done with that. Now we're finally ready to move into some of our stencil work and here's a quick look at this really cool aquatic theme stencil that we just released. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is take some of our original base blue and utilize some of the bubble portion of this stencil and I'm gonna be spraying this blue sort of near the bottom and tops of our gradient. So working in the lighter and darker regions. And what I really like about this is you're gonna have a lot of different size bubbles to play with. So once you're ready to move into some of your lighter and darker shades of the bubbles, this is when you can start to utilize those different sizes, therefore creating a little bit of a better, more random pattern. So really playing around with different shades of color along with the strength that you're gonna be playing through the stencil is really gonna help you play up the amount of texture that you wanna give your design. After I've utilized all of the bubble portion of the stencil here, also included is this really cool wave pattern that I'm gonna be doing in a couple different shades of gray throughout. Now we're ready to remove some of this tape and begin painting some of our beige panels. And here's a look at some of the paints I use to create this light sand color. Once I have this color fully laid down, I'm ready to move into taping everything off so we can begin painting the guts of our shoes, the tongue and sock line portion. And for that, I essentially just want it to be a continuation of our blue gradient, so I'm just going to take a darker shade of blue to do on my sock liner and tongue. And in order to keep that nice and factory soft, you really wanna make sure that you're doing plenty of heat setting in between coats in really short 10 to 15 second spurts. Now we can go ahead and remove all of the tape off our uppers and our midsoles. And here's a really cool tool that I learned about recently for removing any of that dreaded tape residue that sometimes you'll end up with on your midsoles. So this is called a crafter square, which you can actually pick up from a dollar store. And this is really gonna pick up any of that residue that sometimes is left behind from tape. Saves a ton of time and is certainly something that I wish I would have found out about years ago. 
So all in all, this is probably about an eight hour design or so, relatively simple in terms of how many paint colors were used, and overall just some classic color blocking in a really cool colorway on one of my favorite base shoes to work on. Don't forget to check out not only this stencil, but many more that released on our website earlier today, along with our long awaited texture pack. You can find all of those at the first link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and here's a last final look at these.